Welcome back, 0K fans, to Nanalaza Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Theory 333 and we remain with this series, exhibition series, of Flipstep and Stuart doing the New vs. Pro Challenge, the Raider-only challenge for Pro Side. So Flipstep, as mentioned, is only allowed to use Raider units, while Stu... Oh, actually, no, it occurs to me. There's actually a rule added in, because the last game, and if you haven't watched it, you should go watch it, the last game, Flipstep actually built a heavy tank factory after building a light vehicle factory. Now, a rule was added recently, which must have been because of that game. I was a bit curious why it came up. It must have been because of that game, because there is now a rule that was added in that you are not allowed to fact switch. It must have been because of that game. Although, that did not win the game for Flipstep by any stretch. Flipstep won that game because, basically, they just had the stronger economy the entire time. Like, Stewart had one Hail Mary push and burned it up. Like, literally blew up an Inferno, and then the Inferno burned everything to death. That was... Like, that was Stuart's Hail Mary pass. That was... They didn't have much of a chance other than levelers charging down Flipstep's door, knocking down their main base, and stopping production, allowing Stuart to wipe out the rest of the map. That was the only chance Stuart had, and it got burnt up in a fire. But we're on a new map, on a new game. This is Zion, a very hilly map. And a relatively... Decent, it's actually a relatively family map. Stuart going for spiders, while Flipstep goes for jump bots, going for pyros only, of course, because that is part of the challenge. The other part of the challenge is no air. That is another thing that both players have to abide by. Neither player is allowed to make planes or gunships. It's worth pointing that out, because someone's going to point in the comments, why didn't they air switch? Because they're not allowed to, that's part of the challenge. But the main part of the challenge is that Flipstep may only use raiders, and I don't know if the rule is in place that they can't fact switch in this game, but that is a rule going forward, at least. The Stuart is... Well, I'm doing the flea thing, as you always do. I mean, that's what you do with spiders. You go in the fleas, try to figure out what is going on, and Stuart actually looks like they have a very nice weak spot. Yep, they do. Very nice weak spot to a hit. This flea should probably die from the explosion of the metal extractor. Oh, no, not quite. Yeah, Metal Extractors have a pretty big explosion radius. Which is a little bit... I think it's a little bit smaller. Very slightly smaller than flea range. I think it's about two-thirds of flea range. So it's easy for fleas to die killing a Metal Extractor. So one of the hardest things about playing Spider, actually, is the flea's short range. Which is why people tend to just stick with Venoms and Redbacks and Hermits. Because fleas, while they can be extremely deadly raiders, are very difficult to use properly. And that first Pyro donating the medal to Stuart. And right now, Stuart is, well, got a nice reclaim setup. They're set up for reclaim. They aren't really well set up for static economy yet. Neither player is, actually. Flipstep hasn't really set themselves up either. And their commanders decided to just go up in flames. They'll be fine. There's plenty there to burn. They won't be dead. And Flipstep already throwing in the towel. I thought this game lasted a little bit longer. I guess that must be part of the challenge. I must not. Have, I must have missed part of the challenge that forbade the pro player from building static defenses. I think it's more that there's a white list of things they can build, and I don't think static defenses are on that list. Which would really skew in favor of the person not using raiders. But then again, since they're entirely using raiders, they should, in theory, be able to just tear things apart, no matter what. And, I mean, I've actually played... I played one, I was really tired at the time, but I was playing against Snuggle Base, and they went ducks on Onyx Cauldron. Which is extremely powerful and very difficult to counter. And I went shields, which is not a terrible idea, but not the best idea, and I didn't play it right. Yeah, like I said, I was really tired at the time. I've been busy. Hopefully I will stop being that busy pretty soon, but I don't know. Yeah, this Saturday, like I said before, is the tournament, so go sign up for that 1v1 tournament. There's a forum thread for it. But, yeah. Nothing this Friday, once again. Sorry, guys. I will not have... Or viewers, not just... Obviously, they're not necessarily just male viewers. Sorry if you are watching. Friday, once again, is going to be a no-show. I am busy on Friday. Sorry about that. And Flipstep... Man, they are not in the best positions, but they don't have a terrible economic position. They're not in the best of positions, but Stuart 
they have vision. They have units everywhere. They have redbacks everywhere. Which don't quite counter pyros, but my estimation is that it's a 7-3 matchup in favor of spiders. Like the jump bot versus spider matchup. Spiders just have answers. Especially in really hilly maps where jump bots, like spiders just come over the edge and shoot, whereas jump bots, especially pyros, like if it's pure pyro in particular, spiders are going to have a field day. But even when it's not pure pyro, spiders just has answers. Like pyros, well, the answer is Venom Redback or Venom Hermit. And then if they start throwing out moderators, well, then you throw out fleas or you throw out recluses and start throwing out jacks. Well, you have... Once again, Venoms and Redbacks. I mean, the Jacks aren't going to be able to hit them as quickly. And it's just, in general, there are answers. Pretty much anything that the Jumpbot Factory can do, the Spiderbot Factory can answer. Assuming there's enough numbers and they're actually using their economy properly. Yeah, a couple, a couple of Venoms there would have turned that battle around. That Those Pyros would have been dead if they were Venoms, but only Redbacks doesn't quite do it. Doesn't quite cut it, I'm afraid. But at this point, even economy, both players are actually fairly even. Which is a bit of a shift from the last couple games. I mean, the first, the second game though was a bit more even. The first game, it was a calm snipe right from the get-go. And that basically ended it. There wasn't much that could be done. But yeah, we actually have, a, we have a game. How about that? We have a game. Flipstep is expanding a little bit more slowly. But still not in a terrible position, but they are not expanding as quickly as Stewart is. Stewart does have some nice defenses set up. I'm surprised those Venoms are not escorting the Redbacks, or just put up front. Why are they not escorting the Redbacks? That, like, they kind of need to. That's, Venom is the more the thing that counters Pyro than Redback is. Like, Redback is a nice support unit for when the Pyros have been stunned, but it's not very useful when the Pyros are completely able to move, and act, and shoot, most importantly. As there she's right now, this this Redback's gonna try. It's gonna try valiantly. It's gonna get... Well, okay, it won't get killed because the Venoms are coming in to support. But we saw before that four Pyros kill a Redback. And we'll see right now that four Pyros stunned out by Venoms that are supported by a Redback... That are supported by a Redback. Not quite. But they are supported by a Redback. But yeah, getting stunned out. If the Redback came in to support... Stuart? Stuart is... I'm not sure you really haven't seen much of their play in Zero K. Okay? I know they play a lot of Planetary Annihilation. They're actually the person who, whenever I was doing Planetary Annihilation casts, would be giving me a bunch of tips. So they know Planetary Annihilation. I don't know how well they know Zero K, and it's pretty clear that their micro needs some practice. Particularly when it comes to mixed arms combat. Because those Redbacks should have been in range with the Venoms. In order to kill the Pyro. Like, the support is necessary. Both of them need to be together. That's the thing. Venoms and Redbacks need to be working together to deal with Pyros. Not Venoms or Redbacks. Both simultaneously. And Stuart's commander is about to go down. These Pyros will kill it. There's just no question about it. Those, that commander's totally dead. So that's... That's four, that's four metal down. But Stuart still ahead in economy. They have enough static economy right now. Plus Overdrive. They actually don't have much to worry about. The Overdrive alone compensates for the commander death. And Flipstep is still behind. Like, economically speaking, Flipstep is still behind. If Stuart can hang on to this territory, that's 376 metal plus... That's 1,000 metal, including the commander. Excluding the commander, it's not quite. It's like 500, but still. If they can reclaim this, Stuart needs to reclaim this, and they will be set. They'll be set for the rest of the game, provided they make sure to actually do proper Venom Redback combos. And not throw fleas to Pyros and have... Not throw fleas to the fiery wind and have them die terribly. Or wind generators for that matter. This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot. Although it's still not death. I mean, Stuart still has a really strong position right now. They're going to need to rebuild some of this in order to get that overdrive going. But they should have... I mean, they have enough workers. Uh, three workers. Yeah, it's not terrible. They have workers to work with. Four workers, sorry. But yeah, it's just they're not moving units around when they need to. Like, the thing is, when you're playing spiders, you have to be microing at least somewhat. Not, I don't think, as much as jump bots, but you still have to micro. Like, you have to be on top of unit control. Because spiders are finicky. 
Like fleas are the strongest example, but red bag venom, the fact that you have to combine them and have to keep them close to each other, that's really important. The way that hermits work. The fact that terrain is such a powerful asset, so you have to be mindful of when you're over or under hills or where you are on the terrain as you're cresting hills and so forth. That becomes very important. And it's difficult to use well. Especially if you're just letting units sit there and kind of patrol passively. Not even really patrol, just sit there on guard. That doesn't work for spiders. That's more of a shield bot thing. Actually, even with shield bots, that doesn't really work. It's not really anything. Like, it's really hard to get away with that, but particularly with spiders, it's very difficult to get away with that. You're not going to. And at this point, Flipstep is turning this game around. Mostly due to Stuart just throwing away units. Like, auto-attacking, point-moving as well. What are you doing? Line move! You have been playing 0k, haven't you? Like, line move for the life of your units. Line move. Because that is, like, how are you not line moving? Seriously, how are you not line moving? How have you done anything without line moving? Maybe I just overvalue line moving personally, but it's really valuable. Sorry, I'm I'm nitpicking on Stuart's play. But yeah, line move, if you're playing 0k, you have line move. Actually, if you're playing Planetary Annihilation, you have line move. There's a very easy to find mod that enables line move. But definitely in 0k, you have line move. You have it. It's very useful. You also have multiple groups, and with that few units, that would have been no problem. But at this point, here's the thing. Flipstip has this reclaim field. The one I was talking about, that's now 2,000 metal. Yeah, that should have been Stewart's. I don't know where that weaver was. It wasn't reclaiming it. That's for sure. I mean, I just... I don't want to say I see a bunch of Planetary Annihilation habits because I haven't played PA that much, and I've only really been playing in the Titans expansion, which has Reclaim, and which has a simple trivial mod for line move. It, it has a lot of the quality of life features, either quality of life features or game mechanics that 0k has, either built in or as a pretty easy to find mod. So I don't know why Stuart isn't doing that. I don't want to say Planetary Annihilation Habits because I don't think it necessarily is, but maybe it is. Maybe they're just not used to the idea of Reclaim very much. That doesn't make sense to me. That's more of a rookie mistake. I don't think it's PA. I think it's just, it's easy when you're playing, if you haven't played very much, to forget just how powerful Reclaim is and to think in terms of Static Economy because Static Economy is right there while Reclaim, you know, Static Economy is something that comes up every single game. You have to think about, you have to build these metal extractors you have to protect those metal extractors. You have to make sure that they're there. It's extremely visible. While Reclaim, the fields of Reclaim change from game to game. And you have to be mindful of that. You have to be extremely aware of where the units are dying and what you can actually take. What's in your territory and where you can, where you can take it. It's difficult to remember that because it is a dynamic thing. It doesn't stay the same from game to game. Like, units don't always die in the same points every game. But the metal extractors are on the same points every game, so it's easy to just forget about units and take the metal extractors. That and also reclaim is temporary. So it's easy to think, oh well, reclaim's pointless because it's temporary. Yeah, it may be temporary. But the thing is, that temp that time, that time where you actually have that reclaim, which in a lot of cases when you're dealing with like a thousand metal worth of reclaim, which is not uncommon for pitched battles, when you're dealing with that much reclaim, that's for like two or three workers, that's gonna last for about a minute. And when you consider the games typically last 10 to 15 minutes, a minute of an extra plus 15 metal per second? Like, that's pretty much doubling your economy for the most part. Like doubling or one and a half times your economy for about a minute or minute and a half. That's, like, that's massive. And then the army you get from that, like, even just these pirates here, they're overpriced. Well, not overpriced, but they're very expensive. You get five of those. Actually, it's ten of those. I mean, this reclaim field is about ten pyros. That, that is surprisingly huge, and it's very, it's easy to underestimate, it's easy to think, oh, it's not that much, it's not permanent, it's not your infinite resources that you get from the metal extractors, and no, it's not. But, once the game gets going and a lot of battles happen, and a lot of units are dead, it lasts for long enough that you basically have an extra plus 5 or plus 10 from reclaim throughout the game, typically speaking. At high level play, Players will have about plus 10, plus 15 metal minimum from Reclaim after the game gets past the 8-minute mark or so. 
it's rare that you see a high level game where the players do not have more than plus 5 plus 10 reclaim once you get like I said to the point where battles start to get pitched and you actually get fields of reclaim because units are dying all the time and that reclaim becomes extremely precious that's actually really the thing that makes your economy once you get past especially once you get past the point where the map is split although at this point Stewart's dead but once you get past the point where the map is split then reclaim is the thing that differentiates the winner from the loser like that's the thing that determines who wins whoever reclaims and Stewart did not reclaim and that that really bit them hard they would have had far more metal far more units far more offensive power like the things I would say for that is reclaim for the for your own for the sake of your own ability to win reclaim and for the life of your units line move and make sure that when you have units that are dependent on synergies like Venom Redback that you make sure they are together especially against pyros where that synergy is key if anything I would actually no, no, I think Venom Redback's okay. The Venom is the the Venom is the thing to stop the Pyros, and the Redback is the thing to actually kill them. You need both. I would say Venom Hermit's good too, because the Hermit would tank the Pyro damage. That is a key point too. I don't think they kill Pyros as they don't kill Pyros as quickly. But if you can keep the Pyros stunned out, that does work fairly reliably. It requires a little bit less micromanagement. Anyway. Once, that's that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. It was interesting to see how Flipsip and Stewart both played that. Although I don't know if that was so much enlightening as to how the new versus pro challenge tends to go, as it was enlightening as to how Stewart plays and the things that they do that seem to be habitual, or the things they don't do that seem to be habitual. Which I don't know if it's because of Planetary Annihilation. I don't want to say it's because of Planetary Annihilation. I know that didn't have Reclaim until the Titans expansion, so that might be why that habit's out of there, but... I'm pretty sure Stewart has played Total Annihilation-based games besides Planetary Annihilation. Like, I seriously doubt that's... They're not, it's not the first time around 0k. Like, they know at least the basics of how to play. So, it's just a habit thing. It's just getting that, you know, getting into the mindset of... I got Reclaim, gotta get Reclaim. Like, really valuing Reclaim. The other stuff, well, micromanagement stuff, that also comes with time. Though some would argue it's not that relevant. I say it is, especially if you're playing Spyro. Spiders, it's huge. Spiders rely on that. But with other factories, there are factors that don't rely on that so much. I mean, heavy tanks can get away with it for the most part. Once you get into the mid to late game, light vehicles really can get away with it. Other than Scorchers, light vehicles can get away with, mi with not having much micro. Shield bots can sort of get away. Now, shield bots, when you ball up, if you use control to keep everything in the same speed, then yeah, it's no problem. Like hold control while doing a line move or something like that, they'll all stay at the same speed and you'll keep your ball with your outlaws inside the thug shields. That's not too difficult. Cloakies require a decent amount of micro, but yeah, spiders and jump bots both require quite a lot of micromanagement to use effectively. That aside though, the tournament, as I was mentioning before, if you didn't see the last video, the tournament is this Saturday, September 26th at 10 a.m. UTC, which is 3 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 10 a.m. in Western Europe, noon or so in Eastern Europe, and I believe 6 or 7 in the evening in Australia. So, that is that. Sign up for that. Don't worry if you don't think you're going to win, just sign up anyway, because it's really good experience to have tournament experience, and hey, you've been participating in a tournament. That's great. Who knows, you might actually go pretty far. You might go farther than you think. It's always worth a shot. If, you, if you're available, go for it. So yeah, that is... There is a thread on the forums. Go sign up there. And until then, I will actually not have anything to cast. So yeah, once again, Friday's busy. Sorry about that. We'll be here Saturday for the tournament. So that's when I'll be then. But until then, that's... Just watched YouTube videos, I guess, of my old casts. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.